tried to do one video and it cut off. It said I don't have enough storage space. That's what I hate about these. I just don't like these phones, period. And I thank God that they did not have these phones when I was a kid. Oh, shit. What a nightmare that would have been. I'd never get out. <laughs> but I'm heading back from the east side. Johnny was saying, you can run with me, take a ride with me. And I had a bad night last night. My head in the back of the head there is hurting again. And I don't sleep good any night because where that tumor is my day and night. It, it controls your, what's it called? Serotonin and melatonin. So it's like at night I wanna be awake and during the day I wanna sleep. And it also controls your body temperature. Like I said, that's why I seize out and have grandma seizures. My body temperature will get so high that it'll send me into a seizure. But I haven't had one in a long time. Cause I don't, when I start feeling like I got too much sun, I cool myself off. Uh, and at least I have a warning sign because before each seizure, that's what it felt like, like too much sun. And anybody's ever worked construction out in the heat knows what I'm talking about. I had three heat strokes in Arizona. But, yeah, I was thinking, I was driving here, and we've had three people shot on the highway in like the last three weeks here, four weeks, just shot on the highway driving. And, I, you know, that's another thing about living a life where you, you've done violent things, is that I'm always on defense always on defense very much on defense so much so at night time I'll be like let's get these assassin blinds closed I close the blinds at night I don't like somebody being able to be outside and I can't see them but they can see in good um, and I've said before 99.9% <laughs> of those people that do not like me it's because they did something to somebody I cared about. And unfortunately, the way I was, the punishment for what they did was always much, much worse than the crime should have called for. Um, I don't know. Out in Arizona, I kind of, you know, Put, I got to a point after about five years out there, I put my guard down a lot. Um, and it was nice being out of the storm and not having to have your head on a swivel all the time. It, it just got nice to be able to just be me. And I'm also grateful we went to Arizona because that's what I mean. That's another way God kept me alive and probably kept my children from becoming strung out, maybe dead. I mean, I have buried many of my friends' children to drug overdoses. And I blame all of us for that because we were running wild. Now me, I didn't do that kind of shit in front of my kids. Uh, my kids, they knew I smoked pot, you know, when they got older. But, you know, they, hey dad, can I smoke with you? No, you cannot. Uh, when, you turn, when you grow up and you move out and you're paying your own bills, maybe then. But I'm your father. I'm not gonna start smoking pot with you because then you think I'm your buddy. My job's to raise you get you out the door right and if I get to smoke a pot with my kid which I don't see nothing wrong with marijuana 
my priest to confession. I confessed that. That was a funny experience. I hadn't been to confession since like grade school. And I said, man, I got some things to tell you. I don't know how you're going to handle it. And he said, Mark, I've heard it all. And <laughs> I like doing face-to-face -face confession instead of behind the screen. And by the end, I was in there 45, 50 minutes. At the end of it, his mouth was hanging open. I mean, it was hanging open. And I could tell by looking at his eyes, he was very shocked. But I made a righteous, full-hearted confession. I don't believe me going to a priest in confession gets me to heaven. Uh, I believe it's a way to keep me mindful of the things I have done, try not to do them no more. The only thing that gets me to heaven is that I've accepted Christ. That's it. It says our deeds are like filthy rags to God, our good deeds. Even our good deeds are like filthy rags to Him. Uh, back in the, you know, the ancient days of Israel, they would have what was called the Day of Atonement. And they would sacrifice, they, they would sac make a sacrifice and they'd put the blood on the horns of a ram. They'd send it out into the desert. That blood was symbolic of the sins of all the people. And, you know, the problem is, them people are sinning right after that ram goes out into the desert. God and his wisdom, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him would never die but have eternal life. And that was a way that we could all get there, you know, by, by uh, believing in, in Christ. I, I asked my buddy one time, I says, why does everybody hate the Jews so much? And he said, well, the Jews killed Jesus Christ. And I said, no, we all killed Jesus Christ. We all sinned. Who knows? If you were there, maybe you were screaming, crucify him, crucify him too, you know? Uh, we all killed Christ. And if it wasn't for the Jewish nation, for the nation of Israel, we wouldn't even know who the true God was. And the Bible's very, very clear. The nation of Israel is God's chosen people. He's made a covenant with them. Um, I don't mess with Jewish people. I've never had nothing against them. I think a lot of it goes back to Europe and the history there, too. Um, there was a time, you know, kings and queens, when things were going on in Europe bad, the Jewish people had some money, and they were bailing people out. And a lot of debts were quashed by, instead of paying the people back you owed, killing them, persecuting them. Like that had a lot to do with the two. You can, it's amazing how so many bad things are traced right back to money. Speaking of money, I was on the phone all damn day yesterday uh, with this financial investment company. <laughs> oh, and by the way, an IRA is not the Irish Republican Army. Go figure. Uh, I'm like, what the hell? And all this stuff they're asking, and apparently my stepfather left something. I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't want anything, and he didn't have that much anyways, you know, at the end there, except for he had his faith in God. He had... Uh, the peace of mind of knowing that everything he started, he finished, and he went by the book the way the law says to and the way God says to. He received his last rites. He was a wonderful husband to my mother, wonderful father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Um, so he had everything he needed when he passed on. But apparently there's, uh, let me think what it's called again, 
I mean, I'm no Rockefeller in investing or a Robert Nash in the economy. I know if I give you 450, if that's what I owe, and I give you a 10, well then you owe me 550, mofo. I want my money. Fuck you, pay me, you know? But I'm not smart with financial things because I never cared about money. I wish I'd have cared a little more about money. I mean, it's just, I don't know, the evil shit that has been done in the name of money is just, wow. But you gotta have it to live, right? And uh, anyhow, every time I gotta call that place, it's not just elevator music. It's like little beeping sounds, weird beeping crap that almost makes you go insane. And there hasn't been, well, one time I was on that whole thing waiting for somebody to pick up for 45 minutes, but it was over an hour the other two times. And uh, it's called uh, Beneficiary Inheritance. Well, I've got the digital death certificate. I call my brother. He says, you only need to tell him that you want to start a new uh, account and you want what he left moved into your account through Vanguard, it's called. So I call him. Oh, and my brother. And then the lady says, well, I'm going to need the last four digits of his social security number and then what else was on oh, last mailing address my stepfather was very private about financial stuff if you asked a question about how much money they had he said that's none of your damn business that's what that generation was they were speaking of gen generational stuff we're all fighting about politics in america i need to try to talk slower too i made a new friend that's been watching my videos and uh, she actually writes English better than me, and I've been writing it my whole life. Her written English is very well. She's very educated, I can tell that. Um, but when I talk real fast, it's hard for her to understand what I'm saying because she, she's not fluent, fluent in the language. She can speak it fluently, but it takes a minute to converted I guess but anyhow I call back and then the guy I'm talking to says well I need the uh, full social security and you're also going to need a copy of the digital death certificate so I get that and then I do all that and I'm going on you know creating the account and they're like well what type of account is it coming from to me it's talking about a statement on the account, IRAs, and uh, I know what a single and, you know, a dual where you got two people on account and all that, but there's like 15 things, and I don't know. I don't know what the hell it is, and then my brother, you know, he tells me I need something, and they're like, you need something more, and then you need something more. I mean, these people are perfect. My brother works for Boeing. He's a professional businessman. I mean, I know, I know gangbangers on the streets that do more professional business than that. You need this, I need this, bam, bam, done. Yeah, I don't know, it just, and it's hard for me because, I don't know, I, money's not something I paid much to, and investing, and IRAs, and rollovers. My head was spinning with all these terms in my head that I was trying to read the definition of and but as soon as I get that set up there's something there I don't know what's there I don't care what's there money means nothing to me but what means something to me is after everything I did to that man and put him through he left me something too. And to me that says the many apologies I have given him face to face, telling him how sorry I was and that it was 100% on me.
me. It's, it kind of bums me out too because if I'd have known the truth, the way he was with my brother Kenny, me, all of us, most of the stuff we learned about camping and hunting, fishing, almost all of it, it's from that man doing all that stuff with us. And we could have really had a hell of a good time, you know, if things would have been different. But if things would have been different, I wouldn't have learned the things I've learned, and I would not be who I am now. Um, and I like who I am now. But it tells me that he knew that my apology was sincere. It was from the heart, and I had great regret over it. And it also means that he had forgiven me. I know he forgave me. When I was talking to him, telling him I loved him, he kept squeezing my hand. He couldn't talk because all the he had so much blood that hit the brain that it literally shifted where the brain was supposed to be. He could understand. He could squeeze your hand. If you tell him to squeeze my hand, if you could hear me, he could do that. But he kept squeezing my hand. And that really made me feel good because there was a, uh, it let me know that my heart and his heart, there was a uh, forgiveness on both parts. And there was love there. I, I, I'm not too proud to say it. I, I don't know why they say men don't cry. Uh, I, I'll do it. I'll go off by myself somewhere or in the shower because, you know, women were really messed up in America. They're told they have to fit this body type and they got to look like this and this and this. And there's a lot of pressure on them. Men, we got screwed because we were emotionally neutered when we were born. Men don't cry. Men are tough. Men this. Men that. Bullshit. If I didn't cry, I'd be climbing a clock tower or something, going postal, flipping up. But I'm back home now. I need to try to get some rest today. I got that interview with Harvey Does Prison tomorrow. But yeah, I was getting a headache earlier. Like, I get sometimes I'll the only way I can get any relief is right in the center of the back of my head when it comes on. And I'll lay face down. I'll be straight face down. And I can't breathe with my face face down. So I'll put my hands like this on each side. And I mean the tears just roll. I don't sob, but the tears just roll. It is an intense pain where you can't hardly even move. And Amy always says, why didn't you wake me up? She's got everything on her. I mean, when I could work, it's different. I guess now that I'm off drugs, though, that helps a lot. But I'm going to try getting some rest today. I am really just tired. Um, Nate's over at Terry's. That's funny as hell. Nate's over, a black man, over there hanging out with a flag holder for the Northside Nation. And they have us listed as white nationalists in the federal databases. That's bullshit. It pisses me off, man. Whenever I was a part of Northside, that's what it, it wasn't about that. You know, that's like Latin Kings. They started out La Raza, you know, Mexican pride. But nowadays, the white man's bad. There's good and bad in everything. Uh, but the white man right now is bad, especially the Christian white man. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think women would do a little better not to try to dominate men so much. Ain't no man gonna control me and they try to dominate a man. Our creator knew what he was doing when he made us. He made man the warrior, the protector, the provider, the hunter, 
And he made woman the nurturing, loving, compassionate side of the yin-yang, that, that two parts that come together. And when a woman tries to dominate a man like that, it causes wars. Amy never said you have to or you can't. And at some point, subconsciously, whatever, I noticed that and I wanted to do good by her. And now I, that's all I find myself doing is looking for the next good thing I can do for her. I was the type of person, if you said, hey man, you can't slam your head in that car door, it's going to hurt like hell, but I'll do it just to show you that I will do whatever the hell I want to do. Uh, most men are that way, very prideful, uh, very stubborn. My family's stubborn comes wholesale, I mean, but... You know, most men are not going to take a knee to that. And I didn't realize that I was talking to my new friend I met about, you know, later on things come to me and made sense to me because I've had time to think about my life. And I think that's a lot of the reason why Amy and I worked. If she would have been like the rest of them saying, you have to, you can't, trying to control me, I don't know if it would have worked like that. Um, and we did nothing other than what God said to do in the Bible. You know, women being submissive to their husbands, that does not mean you're their sex slave, you're their, you're, you're their slave, you're, you do what they say, when they say, how they say, jump this high, you jump that high. No, because then you're treating a woman like a dog. What it, you know, and, and it also says in there that we are supposed to love our wives like Christ loved the church. Um, that's a lot of love. We're supposed to love our wives like I love my wife, mi esposa. Speaking of which, she just pulled up back there behind me. Um, we're supposed, I cherish my wife. She is my most precious treasure. Look at her, here she comes. She's going to say something. See if she notices cameras on. Are you back or just leaving? I'm back. I just got back. Okay, I'll back. I love you. Hey, Johnny didn't need me to write. I go, you need security? He said, no, nah, man, I don't need no security. It ain't like that. And I said, all right. I said, well, my head was really... had one of them headaches last night. And he said, all right, bro, man, thanks for showing up. And let, you know, let me know. But it has so funny. We used to try to kill each other. And now we call each other brother. Some of my best friends started out as my enemies. I think when men go at each other like that, sometimes you have a respect right out the gate for each other. And uh, that's one thing I did have good taste in. All the people I chose to call brother, every one of them, they just stayed true to the very end and they still are true to this day that means I got good taste in friends but I'm gonna get in here I need to do some laundry too and vacuum in I'm Amy's house bitch don't you know <laughs> yeah. and then this guy down here I ain't I don't care what religion you are but he sits in the front yard in the middle of summer his wife's in one of them full burkas. Aren't they called burkas? They cover the whole body or whatever. Uh -huh. Cutting the grass. And he's sitting there with a glass of tea. Iced tea drinking it. It's got to be hot as hell in that thing with the humidity and the heat here. I don't know. I guess their culture, that's the way things are. To me, it seems like you're treating her like a workhorse. Uh, God made man typically, I mean, Ronda Rousey or, or uh, you know, Leia Ali, some gal like that, my shape now, she beat the brakes off of me. But there are some women that are tough as hell. I know a few of them on the east side. That I, if I fought them, I'd have to fight them like a man, or they will hurt you. But 
by and large, the man is larger, stronger, and have your wife out there in a full burka cut. I ain't going to be judging on them. It just bothers me when I see it. My sons had to start doing it for me because I'd go out and cut and have to stop ten times. And, and uh, they started doing it because they were afraid I was going to kill myself doing it. But that's the consequences of the choices I made to smoke and do drugs and keep running in running into trees and picking fights with thunderstorms and charging into trees. My nose has been broke so often I might lose it if I sneeze. Bobby Bear, the winner. That's D5 in my musical jukebox in my brain. Bobby Bear the winner. It's a lot of truth to that song. But peace out, people. Much love.